Hi, I'm Dr. Jared Christensen from Duke University and chair of the American College of Radiology Lung Rams Committee. On behalf of the college and the Lung Rams Committee, it's a pleasure to highlight some of the updates in Lung Rams 2022. In this presentation, we'll be focusing on atypical pulmonary cysts. Lung cancer presenting in association with cystic air spaces is rare, but we do encounter it in clinical practice. There's a reported incidence of anywhere from 1 to 9% in the literature. However, the precise incidence in a screening population has not yet been quantified, and many cases are initially not recognized as malignant. Uh, for example, a retrospective analysis from the Nelson trial found that if lung cancers missed on initial screening, approximately 23% were associated with cystic lesions. In order to help standardize communication and classification, Lung Rads 2022 introduces some definitions um, in relation to atypical pulmonary cysts. Starting out, let's define thin-walled cysts. A thin-walled cyst is unilocular with a wall thickness that's less than two millimeters. Often the wall will be imperceptible. Um, thin-walled cysts are not classified or managed in Lung Rads. Cysts may be uh, solitary, as we see in this example. Um, they can be a variable size, um, or they can also be numerous, as we see in this patient with lymphangiomyomatosis. Um, conditions that have multiple cysts, such as LAM, Langerhans cell histiocytosis, LIP, and others, again, are not managed by lung rads unless one of the cysts develops atypical features. So what are some atypical features? Well, thick walls. So a thick-walled cyst is a unilocular cyst that has a wall thickness of two millimeters or more. This could be uniform wall thickness, it could be asymmetric or focal nodularity. This particular example demonstrates more uniform or circumferential wall thickness of more than two millimeters. Multilocular cysts. So thin or thick-walled cysts that have internal septations are considered to be multilocular. Um, you may have one or two septations, or as we see in this example, there's numerous or multiple septations. Um, these are complex lesions and are more uh, suspicious at lung cancer screening. What about cysts versus cavitary nodules? So um, it can be challenging. So here we have two different patients. How would these lesions be managed in lung rads? At what point does a thick-walled cyst become a cavitary nodule or a cavitary nodule become a thick-walled cyst? Um, in general, a cavitary nodule is a nodule that was previously solid and now has developed central lucency, um, but that requires prior studies to actually see that evolution. So um, the approach in lung cancer screening, since uh, we may not have prior exams, is going to be based upon the features of the lesion itself. So a thin-walled cyst, the dominant feature is air or the cyst, and these will be measured or managed by their wall thickness. So in this patient on the left, the dominant feature is air or cyst, and we're going to manage it based on the wall thickness. Cavitary nodules, um, in those instances, the soft tissue component is the dominant feature um, rather than the cystic uh, or central cavitation. And so these will be managed as solid nodules, and we will then use the mean diameter to derive a lung rats classification and management recommendation. With respect to atypical pulmonary cysts, um, the criteria are going to fall under lung rats 3, lung rads 4A, and lung rads 4B. And we'll review each of these and the associated management recommendation. All right, lung rads 3. So lung rads 3 is for a thick-walled cyst that demonstrates a growing cystic component. Now, we'll talk about this in a moment, but a thick-walled cyst is initially classified as a lung rads 4A lesion. But over time, um, it may be stable and be downgraded uh, to lung rads 2. As you follow that lesion on subsequent uh, lung cancer screening, if you see that the cystic component is increasing in size, then we're going to upgrade that um, and classify it as a lung rads 3. In this particular example, this cyst is predominantly um, thin-walled, but there is some nodularity along the inferior margin. It was stable, but then eventually the cystic component has increased, so this now is a lung rads 3. The management for lung rads 3 lesions is the same. It hasn't changed. It's going to be a six-month low-dose CT follow-up. What about 4A lesions? 
4A lesions are thick-walled cysts. So as we see in this example, we have a unilocular cyst that has a thick wall more than two millimeters. So this is a thick-walled cyst. It's a Lungrad's 4A. What else is a 4A lesion? Well, multilocular cysts. So we can identify, as we see two different examples here of different multilocular cysts. These are suspicious lesions, and they're going to be classified as 4A. They may be initially multilocular, or they may be a previously thin or um, uh, thick-walled cyst that has been stable that develops loculations and, or internal septations, and that will then be classified as a lung rads 4A. The management for 4A lesions also hasn't changed. Three-month low-dose CT follow-up or a PET CT if there's a solid component of eight millimeters or more. What about 4B lesions? 4B is reserved for thick-walled cysts that demonstrate growing wall nodularity or thickness. So as we see in this example, we have a prior thick-walled cyst, so it would have been a lung rads 4A, but over time, the wall thickness has increased, there's more nodularity, it is now a lung rads 4B. Growing multilocular cysts. So even if they don't develop a solid component, um, just an overall increase in the size of a multilocular cyst will warrant a 4B classification. Also, multilocular cysts that uh, develop increased loculations or uh, changes in its density, developing a soft tissue component, ground glass component, um, even if the overall size hasn't changed, um, the development of the new uh, changed internal composition will warrant a lung rads 4B classification. The management for 4B is diagnostic CT. You can get a PET CT, again, if there's a soft tissue component more than eight millimeters. Um, biopsy is an option, or we've added a new uh, management uh, offering, and that's referral for further clinical evaluation. This is something that you are likely already doing in your clinical practice. Um, we have just now codified this in lung rads. And the type of referral may vary um, based upon the lesion or your clinical practice patterns. There are some other considerations. So everything we've talked about so far applies to atypical cysts with wall thickening, nodularity, um, or multilocular cysts. But what about the cysts that have nodules that arise adjacent to the wall rather than directly within the wall? Um, these cysts can, or sorry, these nodules can be solid, part solid, or ground glass. Um, they may be internal to the cyst or an endophytic nodule. They could also be external or an exophytic nodule. Here's an example of an exophytic nodule. Um, we see the cystic component with um, a nice, discrete soft tissue nodule adjacent to the cyst. So how are these going to be managed? It's going to be based upon the most concerning feature. Um, so what do we mean by that? Well, here's an example where we have a cystic lesion, an atypical pulmonary cyst, and there's a six millimeter soft tissue nodule. Um, if we think that this is arising internally, we could say this is an endophytic nodule. We'll manage it according to the nodule, um, and based on size, would be a lung rads 3 with a six-month loto CT follow-up. However, um, we could also say, you know what, uh, this could be arising from the wall itself. There's some wall thickness nodularity. Um, in that case, it's now going to be categorized as a thick-walled uh, atypical pulmonary cyst, with a classification of a lung rads 4A and a three month photo CT follow up. Um, sometimes it's going to be really hard um, to tell. Um, in general, we want to go with the most concerning feature. In this case, um, we could classify this as a lung rads 4A with a three month photo CT follow up. So, again, in summary, we've reviewed atypical pulmonary cysts. We provided some definitions um, that guide um, the classification and management of uh, these lesions. And um, we've seen some examples of lung rads 3, 4A, and 4B atypical pulmonary cysts. The take home point here is that atypical pulmonary cysts may represent primary lung cancer and they warrant follow up at screening. Lung Reds 2022 adds classification and management criteria for atypical pulmonary cysts that are thick-walled, multilocular, have associated nodules, or demonstrate growth over time. Uh, these evidence-based criteria help clarify how to manage cystic lesions at lung cancer screening and add to the strength of Lung Reds in identifying potential malignancy. 
with that, I would thank you for your time. And uh, I also want to extend my appreciation to our Lung Rads committee. Um, they've devoted a tremendous amount of time um, and expertise in contributing to these uh, updates in Lung Rads 2022. It's truly been a cooperative team effort. Thank you so much.